As a family, felt like we got hit by a Mack truck we never saw coming. It was uh, December 27th, two days after Christmas in the year 2020 when we lost our son, Zach, from what we learned was called a fake pill made of fentanyl. This is the, the worst cr drug crisis our country has ever faced. And CDC death statistics prove it. I'm Flint Anderson, founder of Pain, parents and addicts in need. I've been in recovery since 2001, and there isn't much I don't know about recovery. And my mission is to constantly tell the truth about addiction, to make the realities of addiction, recovery, and drug culture known, and to drive awareness and advocate change that ultimately saves lives. And I'm Jason Lachance, a certified recovery coach with a passion for speaking with others and sharing their knowledge to help others seek recovery and maintain long-term sobriety. And this is the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, presented by Pain, parents and addicts in need. Uh, Chris, it, it's first of all, always our condolences. You know, um, this is this is something that. Um, uh, obviously, as I, I don't know what that's like as a parent to to go to go through that, um, I can only I can only imagine what uh, um, what all that is about. But uh, I you know you're doing some great work, and so why don't you explain a little bit to our listeners the work that you're doing up in up in the up in the Sacramento area? Well, thank you, Flint, for the opportunity to share our story. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, we. As a family, felt like we got hit by a Mack truck we never saw coming. Uh, our four-year anniversary will be coming up uh, this Christmas. It was uh, December 27th, two days after Christmas in the year 2020, when we lost our son, Zach, from what we learned was called a fake pill made of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we had not um, heard of this danger before. It wasn't on social media. It wasn't in the news mainstream or podcast programs. It just was something we'd never actually heard of before. Um, so it was a, a, a danger that kind of just uh, where we learned the hard way. Uh, and uh, I think there were many lessons out of this. One is that uh, Fentanyl will not discriminate. It doesn't matter your social economic status. Doesn't matter your your gender, your age, your your career path, what kind of car you have in your your garage, or social economic status. Uh, if you have a struggle with addiction, or if you've had no history of drug use, recreational or illicit, it makes no difference. Um, it's everybody's problem, and so. Like many other grieving families, I'm a part of a nonprofit called Victims of Illicit Drugs. There are several quality nonprofits out there that are family led to focus on the different spaces that exist that I believe help address this crisis our country is struggling with. And I think all our noble and honest efforts uh, void uh, victims of illicit drugs, we just call it void. We focus uh, our our attention on getting awareness out there uh, to show that something is not right, something's wrong, and then back it up with the education to explain what is wrong and how to protect each other. Another part of our work is also to help legislation uh, or legislators update legislation on uh, different ways to protect uh, our communities, specifically with our youth, um, regarding addressing accountability to those who are continuing to market or um, you know, market products that have fentanyl, as well as trying to help social media become a safer platform for for its users. Uh, so that's that's but my work. I've gone around the United States doing school assemblies. I've done I think about 106 now in the last couple couple years. Uh, plus around 50 or so parent nights and community call to action. I've also uh, testified on, on several different panels in front of different uh, or various types of, of committees here at the state capitol in California, as well as uh, the United States uh, capitol in D.C. Very good. Very good. You know, um, Lot, lots of lots of questions come to mind during all of this. You know, um, we started in 2009 here, 
and, uh, you know, in those days, mainly against, wow. uh, you know, the, the, the pill problem that we were having with Purdue Pharma and that and Oxycontin and that mess. And, uh, you know, and as this thing progressed, um, you know, we didn't see much change at all in anything that was that was going on. And, you know, back in 2012, 13, I started hearing about fentanyl and carfentanyl and um, and started shouting about it pretty loud back then, uh, telling folks, look, this is coming. It's here already. And it's 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 coming west. We didn't know exactly how it was coming in back then, other than it was coming to the East Coast via via some some routes uh, from Russia. Um, but now, of course, that whole landscape has changed, and we all know it's China's with the precursors and coming across the border. And um, and 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 so as we move along in this thing, um, one of one of the things that that I have noticed as of late, and something that I am extremely concerned about right now is the lack of continuing with the awareness piece over the last six months i have not seen a lot of anything uh whether it's on the news whether it's other people out there speaking at least around this area uh i i've seen a drop in in, in a lot of podcasts discussing it and and my biggest concern too is now we're not we're not talking about and again please understand this we're not talking about the people that have overdosed and lived we're not talking about how we fix the treatment industry in this because nothing has changed and on on the treatment side of this thing i own a treatment center and 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 nothing has changed and and again it comes down to several different uh, uh, se- several different areas. What 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 I call you know people with with PP, uh, PPO insurances and then people with Medi-Cal. I mean, it's a there are two different ball games, uh, you know. And and we don't have enough beds. Outpatient is not the answer for a practicing addict. Again, lots of questions, lots of things need to be resolved here. The awareness piece, which I believe all of us did an outstanding job. Okay, back starting around 2017 and starting this, getting it. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the school programs that, that were, some were happening, some were not. Um, so my question to you is, do you see these school programs, and I'm not talking about Red Ribbon Week, okay, because I'm, I'm, going to tell you straight up, I'm not a fan of Red Ribbon Week. Hmm. And I can give you my reasons why. Are you seeing any kind of change in the school system, in the school districts, at least in your area? Are are you seeing anybody take an approach that is, for example, Melanie's Law? Do those schools have Narcan in every classroom now, is every teacher and janitor and administrator uh, uh, authorized to administer it, as the law states? Again, just just asking, what do you see in your area? Oh, thank you for that question. I I, I agree that more needs to be done across the, the spectrum. Uh, before I delve into that answer, uh, I, I think it's important for me to share my perspective of how I how I see this in my lane or from my eyes, um, and it could be very different. For from your perspective, your life experience, or a listener who has no experience on this. Um, I, I see this as a, a and, and statistics show, I know you know these numbers, that this is the, the worst cr- drug crisis our country has ever faced, period, dot. And CDC death statistics prove it. And it is absolutely scary. And it's not a surprise that it has been now for a while, uh, the leading killer of Americans is fentanyl not all drugs, one drug. Why is that? We obviously need to, to focus energy on stopping this because it's not sustainable. We cannot sustain fatality rates like this. Granville, home of hope, here we go again. 2024, we're back. We're Granville, home, Granville Homes is building a, a brand new home. We're gonna give it away on December 4th. 
2024. You can get your tickets, 100 bucks, or you can get a bundle of tickets for 200, which includes the, the chance of winning a brand new Lexus for two years. And uh, Payne will receive 100% of all the proceeds from the tickets that we sell, as well as the eight other nonprofits that are involved with, uh, with, with this event. So uh, you can go to our website, you can find out there how you purchase the tickets. We can't sell the tickets online um, for legal reasons. Um, but other than that, you can call our number, you can uh, reach out to our office and uh, we'll, we'll show you how to get those. So help us out. Uh, and I could delve into specifics there, but for me, I, I like to break it into three spaces, three lanes, I guess. The awareness and education piece, I think overlaps all of them, but I think that's a really big tool in our tool bag to just let people know, hey, this is not a legitimate prescription pill you think you're getting from Snapchat. It is a fake pill. And there's a 70% chance or seven out of 10 chance that it's going to kill someone. Um, <clears throat> that education piece is simple. It's actionable. It's, it's right away. And most of our assemblies, that's the takeaway these kids have. Uh, it's a beautiful experience after it's done when I see authentic and genuine uh, gratitude and appreciation from these students. Mm -hmm. um, I can delve. Uh, that's where meat and potatoes of, of, of my advocacy work has been, is in that space. The other space I like to, con and they all do overlap, is the treatment and prevention space. And having not personally struggled with addiction, I'm not an expert in this area. It's something I've learned a lot from others I've worked with. And I absolutely respect um, the need to uh, break through stigma and to look at this in a, in a way that really brings meaningful and measurable improvement. Uh, effective, rapid, immediate treatment available to those who need it is something we are behind in and need to work on. Uh, preventing it, uh, getting rid of the addiction, however we could talk about that, as well as uh, not having more of a temptation out on the streets. So that opens the conversation about our border and how this stuff is getting in our country. And then the other lane is the accountability lane, holding dealers accountable who are willingly and um, intentionally peddling poison for product, yes. for, for profit. Uh, and they continue to repeat, do that as well as holding social media accountable to police their sites so that this stuff isn't getting marketed. And, and even though they're being reported, it's openly advertised. Uh, a lot of times these social media companies say this this profile does not violate our standards when it's obvious this is not a legal transaction that's going on here. It's harmful content. So the education lane, the prevention slash treatment lane, and then the accountability lane, I think all are important. I like to think of it like a bar stool that is a three-legged bar stool. And if you don't work on one of those lanes, it's like taking one of the legs off the bar stool and it's not gonna work for you. We need to work on that. Now, that's kind of where I'm coming from, and that's my experience and my advocacy of how I see how to face this challenge. To go to your question, are schools and school districts making a change? Yes, I, I have seen a difference from when Zach's mom and I tried to repeatedly go to our school district and share, guys, this is shocking what we're learning. What we've learned in the last few months is something none of us had heard. None of Zach's friends know this. None of his friends' parents know this. I coached Zach's soccer team for six years, and his his teammates didn't know. We had 22 boys on his soccer team. Not one of them had ever heard of a fake pill. Not one of them had understood or really knew anything about what fentanyl was, and neither did their parents. And I know these boys very well because... We grew up with the, with these kids since they were in third grade, and we vacationed with their families uh, many times throughout Lake Tahoe, Hawaii, Jamaica, as as a big group of like a soccer team vacationing. So I knew Zach's friends and his his friends' families, and none of us had ever heard of this. So we were kind of living in a bubble. <clears throat> And once, once Zach's mom and I had discovered and, and were 
just learning in our county that, hey, these are new type of deaths that are happening from a fake pill. And and uh, it's we, we've not seen this before. We're trying to figure out how to manage this. But when I approached the school district, they were saying, wow, this is pretty big information. Thank you. We'll get back to you. And I said, we need to get into the schools like yesterday. At the very least, here are some PSAs I just was given by other grieving families who were, you know, uh, months or years in front of us who had the same loss from a fake pill or products that contain fentanyl that, that the user didn't know. Uh, had fentanyl, they were taking what they thought was um, a non-lethal recreational drug, and and no one had explained that a, a fentanyl was adulterated in that, and they died. <clears throat> and uh, we asked the school if, at the very least, you need to get this PSA out there because we're going to have another fatality in our school district. And it took a lot of effort to finally get in break break into them in terms of like letting them sit down and listen to us. But once we had a meeting at the school district, they finally had their eyes open because I showed them the facts in front of a computer screen. And they they basically turned around and had started with a district parent night and then all the schools started opening up. Um, so it took, it took a lot of of, um, I guess, just repeatedly kind of getting in the door. And once we did, um, we had to start a little small groups because COVID uh, was still a concern. Uh, so they limited us to around 40 or less. Um, but the beginning of the school year in 2021, I guess, um, I'm sorry, uh, in January 2022 is when we finally started getting into like gymnasiums full of students. And once you hit a couple schools, um, they share that info to the other schools, and then we started getting invitations. So it took time, but it's starting to get better. As far as naloxone in schools, in California, AB 890, I believe, is the uh, assembly bill that was authored by assembly member Joe Patterson that was signed into law that required at least a minimum of two doses of naloxone for all school officials to be sort of to be allowed to give. Um, where that's at in schools across California, I don't know the answer to it, but I know all of the ones that I presented to in our area uh, say they carry multiple doses of naloxone. I'm, we have we have one school here that has one box in it, and I know that because mm. this 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 person. Um, uh, is on that campus. I'm not going to say in what, what mm -hmm. regard. Um, and, but, 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 but again, I, I, I under, I understand that, that look, we have some schools that do have it. We have other schools that don't, we have other schools that are only going to keep it in so many different classrooms, um, uh, because they're just not grasping the fact that, that, that Narcan, it, it doesn't have any other properties to it. It does one thing. It has, has one sole purpose. That's to reverse the opioid overdose, period. You know, and, and so school districts are a little afraid sometimes of lawsuits from parents and, you know, on and on and on. But I was just curious what, 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 what you knew about that bill and where some other districts might be with it. You know, uh, can I add one other thing? Sure. Oh, sure. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no. um, what I've seen are schools now have cameras in the bathroom. And they're getting away with it by having the stalls um, go from floor to ceiling um, when they're in the going to the bathroom. So there's no ur urinals now. They're just toilets okay. that have a completely enclosed little uh, cubicle. So then they can have a camera in the bathroom, like where you can see the sinks and stuff. Sure. And inside each of the toilet cubicles where you go to the bathroom is a vape sensor. Um, and it, it'll alert, uh, hey, this stall in this bathroom, there's something going on here. Nice. Um, and then I'm starting to hear schools are starting to randomly drug test their students, um, which is surprising. Those are private schools. Um, and I, I'm surprised that it's gone to that level. But so far, all the schools I've talked to have had naloxone.
New Perceptions North, the premier drug and alcohol treatment and recovery center in Central California. A full continuum of medically supervised top quality care with programs for detox and patient residential treatment with dual diagnosis, intensive outpatient treatment, sober living support groups, and more. New Perceptions North provides adult men and women with the highest caliber of professional health care, treating each client with compassion and respect in a safe, comfortable environment to begin the process of recovery to proudly create and sustain a life without addiction. Call 559-978-1507 or visit newperceptionsnorth.com. One of the things I, I, I do want to bring up is, and look, I, I'm in recovery. I'm a recovering opiate addict. That's, you know, I had a 20 plus year addiction to it. There's not much I don't know about it. I got 20, 23 years in recovery at this point. And, um, you know, and, and when we, when we're, when we're talking, I guess this is my point. So the first question I want to say is when you're doing these school things, um, we have always had a problem with parents showing up to some of these school assemblies um, because most parents don't want to think that this is, this is happening to their, to their kid Mm -hmm. and their child is even going to, do this thing, right? And so, and please take this for 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 what it what it what it truly means here. And then we find out a young person has passed because of what we call now an accidental poisoning. But don't we have to ask ourselves this question? Why were they buying that pill to begin with? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I mean that with, with such love and grace in my heart, it's, 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 it's not even funny because a lot of these kids today, not saying yours, not putting specifics here anywhere, but a lot of these, they're kids. Mm. It's, 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 it's in our nature to, to try and to experiment and to do these dumb, dumb things. We did dumb stuff. Okay. Mm. You know, we, we, we assume that because these kids are, you know, six foot three and, and can shave in juniors in high school, that they're full grown men and they're not. Those brains aren't even close to being mature. They're not even close to being fully developed yet. Mm-hmm. And so and then you even take in the, 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 the side that that, oh, well, may, maybe this person didn't make the basketball team or maybe this guy's girlfriend broke up with him or or you got a parent over here who's who's verbally abusive mm-hmm. or sexually abusive. You know, there's reasons why we want to go. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Yeah, that's an outstanding question, Flint. And um, I'd like to delve into that because uh, I think I can uh, give some perspective. Great. Uh, before I do, congratulations on on your recovery. I, I give you tremendous um, kudos and, and compliments to that Thank for you. you and your team who are, are trying to turn your pain into passion. Uh, into purpose. And and that's something I highly respect. Thank you, sir. Um, so, yes, yeah, sir, you're welcome. Um, uh, you're right. Uh, our kids, um, and when we were their age, don't make this, even smart kids make dumb decisions, but our children shouldn't die from these dumb decisions. They should learn from them. And when we were growing up, if we tried something, and I, even at school assemblies, I admit that my first beer, I was underage. It was a typical, I think it was homecoming in a high school post dance party. And I was 17 and it was a cool thing. And it was either have beer um, in this Dixie cup kind of thing or go over there and get some um, uh, Jägermeister shots. And I figured if I had that Jägermeister, I'd probably throw up in front of all my friends. So I'm going to try this beer and because I want to look cool. And I'm walking around didn't really take to beer right away. And I'm like, uh, I'm not used to this, but at least I have it in my hand. I look at it. What's this beer all about anyways? And I think when it comes to modern day world, there's a lot more choices than beer. Um, now it's vapes, it's edibles, it's puff bars, it's MDMA, it's ex- you know, like ecstasy, all the different recreational drugs and now prescription pills. Okay. Um, if a young person is trying to take a prescription pill for a safe high, they may think that that could be, or it could help them some way. Uh, and sadly, a lot of common examples. 
that I know of from families. A football player in high school gets injured at practice on a Tuesday. And trainers and coaches say, hey, you need to, you need to take some time to recover. We're going to not play you Friday night. And that player is thinking, oh, no, no, no. I'm not missing Friday night's game. Uh, this is the big game of the season. I'm the star player. There are scouts that are going to be at the game. I need to be on my A game. But they know that, well, I can't convince mom and dad to take me to the doctor and convince the doctor to give me oxycodone so I can play. Uh, I don't need a doctor. I can just get it on Snapchat, thinking he's getting something you could get from a pharmacy. Uh, but when in reality, he's getting something far more lethal. Mm -hmm. Or a young college girl coming home for Christmas break from her first year of college she gets a hero's welcome home from her younger siblings and her parents are so proud of her. She finished her first semester at ASU and she is freaking out that she's um, needing to tell them, uh, actually, I think I flunked out of college. I don't think I passed and I think I failed my finals uh, that I took yesterday. And the money mom and dad spent on tuition next semester is all wasted. And I don't know how to tell my family that I'm going to ruin the Christmas. I can't sleep. I have so much anxiety. I'm putting on a mask and I can't manage this. She's only, you know, 19 years old trying to just cope with this anxiety. And so to help her, she looks up something on Google, how to manage anxiety, get a Xanax. Okay, I can get a Xanax on Snapchat. I do a delivery to her house. She um, goes out at 10 at night and comes back in the house. Um, the house surveillance video shows her coming in with a bag she didn't have when she walked out, uh, you know, two minutes earlier. Says goodnight to mom and dad, takes half a Xanax to, you know, just so that she, she's safe, you know, so she, you know, just to be careful and is found the next morning uh, no longer breathing. And she had enough fentanyl in that half of that pill, that fake pill, uh, that had enough uh, uh, fentanyl to kill three or four grown adults. Right. So whether a person is struggling with pain or anxiety, or they really need to focus better and take an Adderall um, that their roommate uh, shared before, which actually had an actual Adderall, but now they want their own. And so they think they're taking an actual Adderall when it's another fake pill and dying. And so these are real stories of real families that I know, these examples that I just shared, where a kid is taking something they think is legitimate to help them or to be a safe high. And in reality, it's something that kills them. Right. And and that that's the education piece we need we need to go out there. Right. Uh, I want to expand on what you said, kids make dumb decisions uh, and, and kids explore their growing boundaries. I often ask uh, uh, high school kids this that are juniors or seniors in the audience and I'll ask them do you guys remember the first time you drove your car with your brand new driver's license and you were alone do you remember that day and they grin and because it was just last month or last year and they're like yeah mom and dad aren't in the car the DMV examiner is not in the car I'm alone I want that's a milestone in every high school kid's age you know in their journey I'm actually legally driving this car by myself. And then I'll ask, were you driving over the speed limit, even just a little to stay in the flow of traffic? And they grin and they're like nodding. Yeah. Were you tempted to read that incoming text? Yeah. Would you do that if the DMV examiner was sitting next to you and, and this was the big test? And they all said, fuck no. <laughs> and we know they would not do that. <laughs> But it is human nature to explore life's growing boundaries, you know, and they, they know that, hey, everybody goes over the speed limit a little bit or maybe reads that incoming test. Everybody's going to try a beer under age. Everybody's going to try a vape now or edible or, hey, I'm going to try that prescription pill to help me study, to help manage pain or anxiety or a safe high. And, and, Back when we were growing up, the worst thing that could happen was that we'd get um, have a hangover, we'd get nauseous, or we'd get embarrassed. But today, the danger is you just may go to sleep like you did last night and never wake up. It is right. lights out. Right. And, 
and that's that's a big difference. There, yeah. it, it is, but I also would just want to say this on that because now we're into this five six years, right? Yes, sir. And look, this is just my opinion. Th- these kids, first of all, are extremely bright. They oh, yeah. they they are savvy beyond what we were at 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 that age. They know what's out there. I again, I'm making kind of an educated guess here that mm-hmm. there are there are ki- look the kids I talk to. Everybody knows what fentanyl is. Everybody knows what Molly is. Everybody knows what heroin is. Everybody knows every drug listed from A to Z. Mm-hmm. I think the days of somebody not knowing or not being aware are gone. Yeah. And one of those reasons is, is that gentlemen like us and the women like, 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 like everybody else out there that are doing this have done a marvelous job in getting that awareness piece mm-hmm. out there. But this is the comment that, I, by the way, I've got grand nephews and nieces and they're in high school and they tell me and they're not angels by any means. All right. Mm-hmm. But 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 this is and, and I hear this from people that have walked in our office that we get into treatment, whatever. This is one of the main things I hear. Well, I, I, I trust my drug dealer. I trust mm. the person I'm buying it from. Mm. And I'm going, whoa, guys, that drug. I don't care. I don't care if it's your first cousin. Mm. Right. You are a dollar sign to them. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I said, th- th- nobody knows the amount of fentanyl mm. that is in an M30 pill or that is in, we, I mean, we understand now that 70% of cocaine that is coming over is laced with fentanyl, but nobody knows the true dosage that's in that cocaine or in that M30 pill. So so when, when we're talking to parents, this is, again, just my, my opinion, these are the things that the parents need to hear. They need to hear that look, yeah, you 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 probably have a wonderful child here, but a you do not have the only child that is going because there's look if there's dependency and then there's addiction or there's dependency and then there's death or there's just straight up death with with with, with this stuff. You do not have the only child that is going to beat either three. I don't care how smart they are, how good looking they are, how athletic they are, how talented they are. You do not have the only child that is going to beat those three things. I 100% agree. Right? So mom and dad, you guys need to listen to us to hear this, get this reality check. Because, again, with all my heart, nobody wants to be where you're at, sir. I 100% agree. And I think, I think that uh, uh, it, it's the biggest challenge in my advocacy work and, and many other families is simply stigma. It's one word, because when a person who doesn't really have any un, a good understanding or experience with this, here's a word such as overdose, fentanyl, uh, poisoning, drug related, or any other names of drugs, they just associate what they might know from when they grew up, and that is addiction. And when they think of addiction, some images may conjure in their mind of a person who's homeless in an alley with a hypodermic needle, dirty, haven't showered. And and that's when victim shaming creeps in. And, and when victim shaming is attached to these stories, our message is lost. Uh, whether it's a chronic story of a slippery slope struggle with addiction, or a one-off uh, acute story where a kid had no experience of any kind of recreational drugs, thought this was legitimate and was going to help them, and they died from it. In my opinion, all of those stories are equal tragedies. Mm-hmm. They're all preventable. And and we have to get past that problem of stigma and and not victim shame, but address this crisis and, and talk about it. Talk to our kids, talk to sure. our youth, and... Talk to the parents of are your children's friends so that everyone is on the, on the you know understanding that just because our kids in a private school or in a nice neighborhood doesn't mean you are immune from this danger. Right. Every it's everybody's problem. Right, but 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 also I want to I just kind of want to explain this from 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 an opiate 
And I, by the way, I despise the term addict. Okay. Drug addict. It, it's, it, it's, it's, it's derogatory. It does not define who we are by any, by any means whatsoever. Absolutely. But, but again, I grew up in a great house. Parents never got divorced. Great family, great life, college, the, you know, the, the, the whole nine yards here. And there's reasons why my, my addiction took it to the levels that it did. And by the way, man, my story goes real deep in all this, this nightmare. Okay. But, you know, when we're talking about overdose and when we're talking about addiction in general, mm-hmm. as, 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 a, as an addict, at once a practicing addict, one of the things that people really don't understand is to the, because there's different types of, I'm trying to say this the right way. There's, there's different types of overdose for the lack of a better term. We have to continue taking, whether it's fentanyl, whether it's hydrocodone, whether it's a benzo, no matter what it is, we have to keep taking more and more because our body requires it. We don't get the same feeling of taking one pill for the rest of our life a day. It's, it's going to increase. At the end of my using, I was taking between 70 and 80 Vicodin every day. Every single day, if there were more, I would have taken more. And when we get into that addiction cycle, there are worse things out there to us than death. And it's called life. Because we have created, for for the lack of a better term, we we have created such a mess, such a chaotic mess that sometimes we pray for death. We know that two milligrams is the quote, is the, is, is the, is the marker, is the line that is going to take us into the next world. And the number one reason why we don't stop taking is because we are deathly afraid of withdrawal symptoms because they are as brutal as brutal can get. And so we will take that chance. If we have to go over that two milligram mark, we would rather take that chance than be dope sick and be that miserable. Mm -hmm. I prayed for it at times. Okay. Just, you know, whether you have a faith or not, but mine was Lord, just take me. Okay. I can't, I I can't, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and so when, when I talk about prevention out there, this is an every human being on the planet has that in them Mm -hmm. because the drug always wins. Mm. It, it, it's, it's, it is that powerful. And so when we get to that, that that's part of the prevention piece that, that I like talking about to people because Lawmakers, law enforcement, I, I did a thing in Bakersfield last Friday talking to lawmakers. They had no clue some of the stuff that I was telling them about, about the addict, the user, what our mm-hmm. life is like, yeah. and what you guys can do as law enforcement to help us. Yeah. Be, 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 because everybody has that it's, that. it's definitely a strong possibility that everybody that's using something is going to get to that point. And we and, and and so lawmakers don't understand this. They don't. I'm sorry. I've, I've I've worked with Jim Patterson for years. I love the man. OK, he he he's starting to get it. He gets it more than most. But but all those folks sitting up in Sacramento, I've I've presented before the Public Health and Safety Committee. I've I've done those things. These people are clueless. Yes, they are. They're, they're clueless. And you know, as well as I, they're clueless from treatment to, 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 to the legal, I mean, to the law enforcement side, to, to, to all of it. Yeah. So how do we, how do we try to even have a solution for something when we can't get the people that are qualified to make those changes, make those changes? I think it starts with November 5th. It does. It it does. Yeah, Uh, man, I so much more in tune to the political landscape only because I've testified a lot and I've heard them talk. And I'm I'm just astonished, you know, um, 
both at, in the state and, and in DC. COSA is a great example, Kids Online Safety Act, uh, how it's so bipartisan and so politically, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad. It, it is absolutely disgusting, to be honest. It's, it's not serving your oath, your country, the way you swore you would. And, and that's, I, I have no respect for that. So you're, you're absolutely right, uh, right on on it. Uh, Chris, can you tell me what was going on or you think what was going on in Zach's life when he purchased that counterfeit pill? I think isolation and the COVID lockdown restrictions that, that started about nine or 10 months before Zach died played a, a role, a big role in a lot of our youth. And um, be, because I think it made them appear to be more of a risk taker than, than before since they were isolated. Uh, the end of Zach's junior year, uh, soc- the track season was canceled. His behind the wheel driving test was canceled. Um, junior prom was canceled. Our summer plans were canceled. And there were some really big ones that all of us were looking forward to. And then uh, in the fall uh, was our last season playing soccer. And we were, with, after a lot of cajoling and trickery to the, the soccer league, we were able to convince them to at least get them to practice. And one by one, every game was canceled throughout the entire season that fall. Uh, homecoming was canceled. Now, what Zach and his friends did to stay connected is they used Minecraft a lot. And it's a social interaction game they can do on a computer where they can talk and had many nights in the middle of the night saying, Zach, go to bed. It's 3.30 in the morning or 4 in the morning. And I can hear him tell Kevin, go over there, watch out. Sam, no, no, don't go up that, go down this way. You know, because they're they're in that maze thing. It's a very creative game. I enjoyed watching him play. And he he really liked to show the worlds that they created as a team. And uh, they had their own avatars and they played a lot online uh, to can ma- remain connected. And, and a, a respectful note is after Zach died, his, his teammates um, uh, kept his avatar alive and built a world around. Nice. Um, you know, grief is always, um, close to the surface and, uh, it's tough, but it's important to share. Um, I like uh, a quote, Charlie Plum said, um, adversity is a horrible thing to waste. Charlie was a, a, a revered Vietnam prisoner of war for almost seven years who survived uh, the unthinkable. And that's kind of how I like to put that in perspective. But anyways, um, going back to your question, Zach seemed to be doing really well with it. Um, and I think once COVID lockdown restrictions were starting to lift, <clears throat> what ended up happening is um, our mall opened up. And it was the first public place in December of 2020 where uh, we can gather in a public area. And although Zach wasn't really a mall kind of kid, uh, he was thrilled that hey, we can go to the mall. Oh my gosh! And and the reason why is he said we're seniors. We're, we're we are not living the way we thought we would be living when we would be high school seniors. And now we finally can. And, and it made sense. And our mall was full of middle school and high school kids. But what none of us understood or really thought about is the mall was also full of young people, young in their 20s, in, in this case, 21, who were there for the sole purpose of marketing and peddling products yep. that have fentanyl in it for their profit. And that's what happened. Zach was finally hanging out with his buddies at the mall. And they were able to just chill and be together in person. And they were able to meet with a dealer on social media called Snapchat. And the dealer exploited certain features, specifically the Snap uh, Snap Score, the quick ad feature, and the geotagging feature. And basically approached Zach and his friends. He kind of homed in on them with the Snap Score, or I'm sorry, the, the Maps feature. 
and said, hey, did you guys see my uh, my my little video earlier today of my menu? And uh, you guys interested in it? And uh, that <clears throat> when they met it, and where they met and how long they talked, it was caught on surveillance video at the mall. Uh, this is a stranger. Our kids did not know this this man. And he had a conversation about products he was selling. And eventually what ended up happening is he convinced Zach and his friends to buy a Percocet pill. Uh, at least that's what they were told was Percocet. But as you and I know, it was a fake pill made of fentanyl. Uh, but Zach and his friends did not know that. They thought it was a Percocet. Now, why he purchased that, I don't know. Maybe to be more daring, to take bigger risks, to be what they thought was a safe high. One of the boys shared that they were talking about getting a better workout and it could be an alternative to creatine um, because Percocet's like what I got from the dentist once and I didn't feel pain. And if I don't feel pain, I can do more push-ups and pull-ups and therefore get bigger muscles. A 15, 16, 17-year-old high school boy might actually think like that. Um, but what in reality is we, we will never know what really took place and what the conversation really happened because those messages they had that day uh, are ephemeral. The, the, the platform the, the, is ephemeral and the messages disappear. <clears throat> but um, it wasn't because he was isolated necessarily, but because they were coming out of isolation and they were finally able to be like in a public place, maybe they were taking risks they would not have taken had we not been isolating. I don't know if that really answers your question. First of all, thank you for for sharing that, Chris. That's um, yes, sir. We we know that that uh, that that can be extremely painful to share stories like that. Um, yes, sir. But but what you do is you 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 give so many other people some hope, um, and 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 that's important. And uh, I mean, I'm uh, look, I'm I'm a dad. You know, I'm I'm looking behind you. I'm looking at Zach's pictures. You know, and uh, um, God, what a good looking young man. I, I mean, and we always ask ourselves why, you know, that that's 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 just, that's the question. And and yeah. and I just never have an answer. You know, I, I just I just never have an answer. Um, but with with that being said, um, that's why it's important that we that you and I and Jason and the rest of us that we continue this. But, but as we continue this, we must tell the truth about all of it. And, and sometimes the truth. And what I mean by that is, is there are individuals out there that blow it up or tone it down or do whatever, because they don't, for whatever reasons, they just can't quite get that 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 truth out there, you know. Um, and if and if we don't do that, I I I I, I grieve for this nation. I, I I really do, you know. We 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 have we have there are cartel members in every fifty states right now. That is a verifiable mm -hmm. fact. Yep. And when you and, and so we Jason saw a report the other day about how some doctor was in San Francisco and the fentanyl, uh, the, the amount of fentanyl is coming down and there's not that much out there and blah, blah. And, and it's like, whoa, wait a second, man. OK, what planet are you living on and who gave you the right to even put that out in public to give to give false hope to somebody? That's that's what drives me absolutely up a wall. The other thing that drives me up the wall is people not um, not knowing, and, and and maybe I've already said this, but not knowing the person that's that's using the substance. It, it, it it's it's because it's not just the person. In fact, in fact. There's probably more true addicts that don't live on the streets. Because how do you find, how do you define the word addict or dependent when you have still, we still have pain management doctors prescribing because of the mathematics 
You can prescribe somebody 240 10 milligram Norco every 30 days. Do you know why? Because the math works out too. That's eight pills a day. And as a society, we can take eight pills a day. But, but think about it, 240 10 milligram Norco. You will become dependent on that drug in about seven days, seven to 10 days. You're not a full-blown drug addict, but you're dependent on it. So again, the majority of addicts out there are not the street people. They're the ones that are just visible. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I believe that. I, I, I think when you mentioned earlier, uh, why do people make these choices? Uh, that's a, a really good question, whether it's uh, a person with a long-term struggle with their addiction or a young kid experimenting with something or just like, what's this all about? Um, I like what you said earlier. Uh, it's human nature to, you know, well, what's this all about? What am I missing out in? What What could help me? Maybe I actually will benefit in some way with this. And there are some cases that it will and sure. some cases it won't but like i we said earlier um in the past uh you know you could go down that slippery slope of it uh, of addiction or you know whether it's addiction to a drug or uh gambling or pornography or sure. chocolate <laughs> cigarettes or whatever <laughs> the addiction yeah. is um but now, um, because of illicit synthetics, it, it's a whole different landscape. And I like to share it's more like a minefield, not just a slippery slope. And it's a one time, one one pill, one line, one bump, one time can kill. And it, it's so different. We cannot tolerate that. We just have to learn as a society, how do we manage life's challenges, life's stress right. um, to bring it for parents and people our generation uh, when we were growing up without illicit synthetics in the world uh, we have to kind of put ourselves in our children's mind uh, what we didn't have back then was this uh, a cell phone and it has become a a dependent and reliable resource for kids uh, it has helped them solve math homework problems. It's helped them climb that ladder of social acceptance with their friends. It's helped them play a musical instrument on their own. But what we need to share and add is like there are other harms out there and there are bad people out there who are wanting to make money off of you or hurt you. And, and that's something that we're lacking in, in education. The other thing I think we also need to consider is this. Prescription pills, yeah, uh, legitimate prescription pills that we actually get from our doctor. Um, when I was in middle school, prescriptions were not nearly as common as they are today. Uh, usually grandparents or people coming out of surgery had, had these things. But in over the decades, we've had so many advances in technology and advances in medicine. There's prescriptions for all kinds of things, legitimate prescriptions for various different illnesses or challenges. And, and they're wonderful. They do wonderful things, including legitimate fentanyl to help people yes. who are struggling with severe pain. Uh, people, um, our dogs, uh, Jake, who's laying right here next to me, takes prescriptions for managing seizures and Addison's disease. And our kids today are growing up in a world normalized with prescription pills they see their friends at school their siblings their cousins their pets have prescriptions so when they grow up in a world as little toddlers and, and older as young teenagers thinking oh well prescription pills are safe they give great solutions that's all it is a good thing which is true if it's legitimate uh but when they think of the the idea of a prescription pill um you know, that might come theoretically from this and the accessibility on a, on a device like that. Well, why would I waste my time with a doctor and a pharmacy? I'll just get it on my own. And, and that, that is unfortunately causing a lot of uh, that. That's, I think, causing a lot of, uh, of, of, uh, it's worsening our crisis. It's adding the fuel to the fires is, is the accessibility and that mindset. And as adults, we didn't grow up with prescription pills. Uh, 
like they are like kids are seeing today and i, I think that's maybe part of how we need to face it mm -hmm. you know the, again the prescription pill thing it's it's like that was that was my gig you know that was because back in the back yeah. in the 80s and, and 90s uh i i had 13 different doctor's offices going uh the pharmacies weren't connected so you could go to any pharmacy you wanted three times a day all right as long as it was a different one you know and and get those um so and and in essence we learned nothing from that mess uh, we right. we learned absolutely nothing from it yeah. um you know i want to say one thing too you know another part of that is that we 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 take pill we don't take pills because they 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 don't make us feel good okay <laughs> we we take them because they make us feel good and and when you're even watching television commercials you know when you got butterflies flying around and people wandering through fields okay and you know and 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 life is wonderful type of a thing well god i tell i still want to take it you know it's 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 like holy moses but Again, that's why I'm saying earlier, there's so many different facets to this. There's so many tentacles out there, and it just doesn't seem like we have taken one of those tentacles and disposed of it properly yet, you know, um, and, and, and that's, that's an enormous concern of, yeah. of mine because the, the, the fact is, Chris, look, Yes, I, I, I'm in recovery. Yes, I am lucky to be sitting here. No, no question about it. I, I had two heart attacks during this mess, open heart surgeries. Yeah. I, I mean, I've had 30 surgeries altogether in the course of my life because of my addiction and because of some medical issues. And, and, and look, most of us don't survive this mess. You know, most, most, I mean, and I don't mean that, that, we, we overdose from it. Our, our life just does not survive it. That is now the focal point of our life is that medication and how we have to have it. Yeah. And one of the things, of course, we teach, because this is something I, I, Jason knows, I had my foot reconstructed a year ago, three days ago, whatever it was, October 26th of last year. You know, there, there's a whole plan that we have, you know, when, when, when I have to go mm -hmm. in and have a procedure of any type. Right. And that plan is stuck to, I mean, verbatim all, all, all the way down the line, because we can, I can never take that chance. I will never go back to where I was because I will not come back. I, I, I tell people I, I, I don't have enough. I, I have another use in me. I don't have another recovery in me because it's just too damn hard. Yeah. You, you, you know, I've heard I've heard that. A yeah. Times. Right. Right. So so the point here is. I, I, and maybe I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm just the wrong guy. I don't know. But, but, but what I would like to do is, is, is to tell these kinds of things to people so they don't even get to where I was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and right? preventative. Yeah. You prevent it a hundred percent. And for those parents wondering, well, no, 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 not my kid, not my family. Uh, if they're thinking that we need to urge them to think again, um, uh, Marie Folio said it well in a quote, adversity, uh, no, 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 that's Charlie Plum's quote. Marie Folio said in a quote, avoidance doesn't extinguish our fears, taking action does. And as a community as, of parents, teachers, coaches, counselors, caregivers, uh, recovery experts, uh, we absolutely have to face this ugly monster. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it will completely consume our community. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. I can't tell you how much of a good man you are. And, oh, and, and man, just, just, just keep, keep doing it. And whatever we can do here to assist you in anything, we're there. All you got to do is pick up the phone, yeah. man, and, and we'll be there. Likewise. I, I was going to say exactly the same thing. I'm here for you. I'm as close to you as your phone. So just call me, reach out, and um, be happy to continue our conversation. Thank you, you for all it. that you guys are doing. Thanks, Chris. It's not short of heroic. Thank you. Well, we thank you all for watching on YouTube. Uh, of course, our YouTube channel, at Pain Nonprofit. If it's your first time watching, hit that subscribe button. Leave a thumb up on the video and a comment down below. And please share with someone that you know will get value out of the Don't Hide the Scars podcast, which is also, of course, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you can subscribe there, leave a rating and review. We would appreciate that as well as a share if you enjoy the audio form.